Hey mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm here with one of my favorite fall mushrooms. This is lion's mane mushroom. The uh, scientific name is Harissium arenaceus. Lion's mane is a beautiful wild mushroom to find. It grows from the side of trees, and so unlike a lot of mushroom hunting adventures, looking for lion's mane means looking up into uh, you know the oak branches to see if uh, one of these has popped out of the side of um, you know one of the trunks of a tree. So um, identifying this mushroom is relatively simple and straightforward. It is a wood decomposer, and again, you'll see it most typically growing out of some sort of crack or or a hollow or breakage in uh, a living or distressed tree. Sometimes you'll find them on dead trees as well. Um, and when you open up the mushroom, you will see that you have really long, um, you know, teeth. And that's what gives it, of course, its common name. This is very soft and very wet, but also it's kind of, um, you know, soft and smooth, I think is the best way to describe it when you when you touch these. It's really quite, uh, quite nice. It's like petting a mushroom kitty, I don't know. Uh, when you get toward the center and where the mushroom emerged, this flesh becomes far more tough and oftentimes is a little bit discolored. As far as the outside of the mushroom, you have this gorgeous, you know, toothy uh, sort of blobby appearance. And then on top, uh, oftentimes it starts to look a little dingy, sort of, um, you know, <laughs> like shag carpet that has seen better days. So you have a little bit of yellowy staining, you have, um, you know, a bit of sort of fibrousness, some dried up stuff. Uh, looks like a little green play-doh, Lord only knows. So, uh, you know, the top of the lion's mane and where it emerged from uh, the tree itself, I will probably cut off and discard. But the rest of it, I'm going to cook thoroughly and then mix together with a bunch of ingredients, uh, you know, like panko bread crumbs and jalapeno peppers and onions particularly, maybe some shiitake too. And I'm gonna make them into patties. And uh, that's a really delicious way to enjoy this mushroom. So um, lion's mane in North Carolina, you can find it you know, starting in May, but it usually is a fall time mushroom. So, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for lion's mane, no matter what, no matter where, but, um, it's much more likely that you're going to find it when the weather is, uh, you know, nice and cool. So, uh, in conclusion, I have difficulty finding lion's mane in the same tree year after year. I do continually try, but actually this one um, was growing on a tree that was a close neighbor to a mushroom tree that I visited last year. So I don't know much about their life cycle or ecology, except to say that mine don't seem to stay put. And even though um, that you know, can irritate me greatly. I guess it gives me greater motivation to um, explore the woods and also look up and about and not just at the ground for, uh, you know, my my uh, ground dwelling mushrooms. But again, lion's mane, really wonderful, super hefty and fat, big fan of that kind of uh, haul to bring home. Um, one final note on identification. Sometimes folks will find uh, mushrooms that are like uh, toothy and hanging off the side of wood. Sometimes it's just a few little teeth like like that and they'll say, oh, is that a, an immature lion's mane? And uh, the answer is usually no. And the easiest way to tell is you just handle that fruiting body. So, you know, the mushrooms that are white in color and or, you know, in creamy in color like this one and uh, grow off the side of wood that are not lion's mane are um, either related to lion's mane in the Herisium genus, so also very good to eat, or, um, you know, a crust fungus of some kind uh, that is going to be, um, you know, very uh, tough and kind of almost woody or like twigs. And so, you know, this woody, leathery, tough thing is very, very common with the, uh, you know, toothy mushrooms that sometimes people get jammed up on when they're uh, looking for lion's mane. All right, um, so that is one of my favorite fall mushrooms and I'm really delighted that I got to share it with you. The next uh, mushroom I want to give you some info about is, uh, here we go, we'll do Trimedes betulina. So we're coming into that time of year when there are a lot fewer uh, wild mushrooms to be found. And I spend a lot more time looking at uh, bracket mushrooms. So what I have here actually are two different Trimedes uh, species. So this one I'm pretty confident is Trimedes gibosa. It could be Trimedes asculi, um, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, there are a couple of different, uh, you know, Trimedes mushrooms 
mushrooms that are sort of white lumpy bracket fungi. And then you have your uh, Trimedes betulina, which is, uh, you know, kind of uh, a little bit furry and it does have a variegated pattern on the top. So this one, you know, you have kind of some zones going on, but there's not a lot of distinctive bands uh, of color, but you have that going on with uh, your, um, you know, uh, Trimedes betulina. But when you flip it over, that's the fun part. So this uh, is commonly called, so Trimedes betulina's common name is the guild polypore, which is a total contradiction in terms. Uh, but what you have underneath is basically these thick, deep, uh, you'd call them lamellate, uh, which is gill-like structures. And if you look really closely at them, they're very forked. They start to look almost maze-like. And if you find these mushrooms like growing on a piece of wood and they're growing underneath, sometimes it will become completely maze-like. And that is what uh, it, mycologists call dataloid. I really love, uh, you know, that particular description uh, because it's a reference to Daedalus. And Daedalus is uh, the inventor and architect, the artificer who built uh, the labyrinths that the Minotaur was trapped in in ancient Greek uh, mythology. And so, you know, to say that something is dataloid is to say that it is maze-like. Now the, uh, you know, guild polypore, sometimes this is more, you know, more on the guild end, uh, but that's always a fun thing to look at, especially when you contrast it with the underside of Trimetes gabosa, I'm going to call this as shorthand, you know, all you have is a porous undersurface as opposed to those big, striking, uh, you know, quasi gill like things. All right, so I'm going to see if I can get a better look here. So you can see you have these elongated uh, pores, and that, that's what makes this a polypore mushroom. Uh, but sometimes, you know, these white Trimedes mushrooms are really, uh, you know, beautiful and get algae on top of them. So you have these zones where it'll be like green and then lighter green and then white on these different bands. And then you have these, uh, you know, these holes these, uh, these, you know, pores are not really just straight up little holes. They are, uh, you know, either elongated, some of them become dataloid, and I really, really enjoy that. Okay, so, uh, Trimedes gibosa and Trimedes esculi, there's also Trimedes elegans wandering around out there. I don't know a lot about them, except to say that uh, I'm going to spend some of my winter becoming more familiar with them, because these white, chunky, uh, bracket fungi are very, very common in the winter when other things are sleeping. All right, um, I am going to leave you with a quick comparison between um, the uh, false turkey tail mushroom. So this is a false turkey tail right here uh, in the sterium genus and a real turkey tail. So this is also in this genus we've been talking about, Trimedes. So you can see they look very similar. They grow on wood and you have this variegated like zoned pattern here. Uh, but you know, the real distinction becomes very obvious when you flip them over. So what you have with uh, your turkey tail, uh, scientific name Trimedes versicolor, is a porous surface. So let's see if we can, let me see if I can get it there. Oh, I'm doing 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 bad work. Ah, here we go. Okay, you can see it a little bit. So unlike those other uh, Trimedes pores I was showing you earlier, they're just little like, like little pinholes. And if you look at the bottom of your sterium parchment fungus, it's just completely uh, you know smooth underneath. The thing that can be really uh, distracting and and cause a little bit more of a similarity between these fruiting bodies is that uh, your sterium oftentimes as it ages, you know, it starts out more of a bright color like this, sort of an orangey brown, but you'll get algae uh, growth on top and so you start to see yellow or uh, you know a greenish variegated pattern and that's very common with your uh, turkey tails which come in every kind of color from you know these uh, sort of gray and uh, red brown ones to blue ones when it's really cold sometimes a lot of them are greenish so you know um, telling the difference between the two is something that's always you know fun to just basically accomplish and 
when, once you do, you really have a good grasp of what a polypore looks like, which is, you know, again, a mushroom that has a porous undersurface and no gills, no thick sponge, no uh, dramatic ginormous teeth, none of that business. All right, I have talked at you long enough and I want to go and make some patties out of this and I am not confident that I have panko breadcrumbs, so I have a long to-do list in order to uh, eat my lion's mane, but... I hope you have a good rest of your mushroom season. This has been a really wonderful year, not necessarily because of the mushrooms. I mean, it was a good year, but it was also very spotty weather-wise. But uh, I've had a chance to connect with some, you know, mushroom people at festivals and also online. And it's just been a really fruitful year for growing those relationships. So if you're a part of that, thank you very much. If you're not, you should join in and uh, find lots of mushrooms.